You see, as president, he has the entire defense forces under his command. The entire regular police service waiting for his orders, the administration police just raring to go, the GSU who are idling around in their bases, plus a dozen other special units currently guarding VIPs and their families. Plus, he enjoys regular briefings by the NSIS who can tell him everything happening within our borders, including if I intend to kill a fly today. His administrative structure is also crowded. The number of officers that are directly answerable to his office is huge enough to form an army and counter any attack even without using foot soldiers. Kenyans cannot afford to see lives being destroyed over weeks and the people charged with security are not being indicted because those are the instruments of the president in ensuring security. Credit to him, he has previously saved the situation gallantly. He did so in Mount Elgon when he sent in the military to nip the SLDF menace in the bird. He has even lent a hand to our neighbours, with our military stomping their authority over the Al-Shabaab in Somalia. And when he visited Mombasa a week ago, the military came out to guard his entourage from angry youth who had rioted the whole week and with that put a stop to the skirmishes in the coastal town. So what is different this time round, Mr. President? Who should we expect will save the people of Tana River? If KDF are engaged in Kismayu, who are they engaged for? If they are engaged to safeguard the populace down here, if they are engaged in Kismayu to ensure that the Kenyans within their borders are safe and Kenyans are killing themselves within here, it's not sanity. It doesn't add up. In the meantime, the killings in the Tana Delta